One of the remarkable things about regional air pollution, sort of air pollution that blankets the whole basin, is the variety of impacts that it has. It's bad for the lungs, causes lung cancer, certainly exacerbation of asthma, it exacerbates chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, but it also has an impact on other organs in the body. We have some studies in which we've seen associations between air pollution and autism in children, and with a whole variety of other health endpoints that are major causes of chronic disease of modern life. So here in the Los Angeles Basin, in the general metropolitan area, we have specific problems in the area, particularly of air pollution, particulate matter, which you can think of as little pieces of dirt floating in the air, and ozone, which we're infamous for in Southern California. Those have long-term effects and short-term effects on the people living in this region. It's been well established by decades of research that exposure to particulate matter is associated with increases in daily mortality, long-term increases in mortality, and in fact, in places where, where particulate matter has been reduced, you see decreases in death rates, really dramatic decreases. Across California, there are about somewhere in the order of 7,000 deaths a year that can be attributed just to heart attacks and heart disease from this fine particulate matter, sort of regional particulate matter that blankets the whole area. It's cancer, it's respiratory health, it's asthma, it's diabetes, and it's cardiovascular health. All of which, by the way, are the top uh, reasons why Americans die and die early. Imagine this glass jar represents the air quality in Southern California before rapid population growth during the 20th century. With a dramatic increase in population came industrialization, including manufacturing facilities, refineries, power plants, smoke, fumes, and an ever-growing number of automobiles. Rapid industrial progress during World War II boosted the region's economy and created thousands of good jobs. However, industrialization also brought new waves of smog, and by the late 1940s, air pollution in Southern California had reached critical levels. Something needed to be done. Agencies were formed, regulations were established, and slowly the tide of air pollution began to ebb. Great strides were made during the 1960s, 70s, and 80s with significant reductions in emissions from most all the major sources of air pollution. But there is still more that needs to be done. Over the last 40 years, almost all of the regional pollutants have decreased pretty, pretty consistently. That's a triumph. It demonstrates what we can do if we put our mind to it and make the kind of decisions as a society that we need to to reduce air pollution exposures. So many people think that because air pollution seems so overwhelming, there's nothing I can do. It's sort of beyond me. It's somebody else's problem. It's a big issue. We can't take care of it. But really, the choices you make in your everyday life do affect air quality. When we consume, when we buy things, we ought to be more conscious about where things are produced, where things are made, but also about the idea of how did it get to my hand? What is the footprint of this item? Everyone, wherever they live, has the opportunity to impact our environment, to impact the air that we breathe, if you want to say that. And little things help. So one of the things that um, we, we discuss here at Loma Linda is lifestyle. What I told my parents and the kids is, instead of driving your car to practice, to the games every day, polluting diesel, polluting internal combustion engines, drive an alternative fuel vehicle compressed natural gas, plug-in electric, all electric, hydrogen fuel cell, or there's alternative forms of transportation. Take mass transit. Every week I ride my bike to work, 10 miles to downtown Los Angeles. Every week I take the train. We can all do something 
to reduce pollution from mobile sources and clean up our air and protect the health of all our children. So we're not necessarily trying to convert people's lives entirely to have them drop a car and pick up a bike. We just want them to address those short distance trips that represent trips to the market, trips to get a haircut, trips to, to get a local uh, sandwich at a local business. We really want them to start considering bicycling for those short distance trips. One thing we could do to help clean up the air is be part of the change. I don't think you have to be drastic, but just one day a week. Walk to school with your kids. Walk to the cafe instead of driving. Enjoy our neighborhoods and be out on the streets and sidewalks with your neighbors. My name is Esteban Gajardo and I take the bus to work. My name is Sofia Menemelis and I practice sustainability by using compost to grow plants and using water from a rain barrel to water the plants. My name is Antonio and I started an idling awareness campaign at my school. So if you have to idle more than 10 seconds, turn off your car. To reduce our carbon footprint, instead of buying bottled water, we filter our water at home. One thing I can do to reduce my carbon footprint, throw your shower. I parked my gas guzzling SUV and I went all electric for a net savings of $200 per month. Hi, I'm Herb, and I ride my bike to the farmer's market for fresh fruits and vegetables. I have a sister with severe asthma. Just last month, in one week, she went to the emergency room three times, and I don't think anyone should have to go through that. I lost an uncle to severe asthma. He went into the hospital claiming that he was having like a minor asthma attack, but he just couldn't control it and never came back out. Nobody should have to go through that. It's inhumane. I help reduce air pollution levels in my community by taking the bus home, or if I miss the bus, I walk home, like right now. In the Pino family, we... We turn off lights when we leave the rooms. Today, there are more than 17 million people living in the South Coast Air Basin. Tomorrow, there will be more. Our region needs a strong economy and clean air. So, if each of us can do one thing, make one change in our lifestyle, make one choice that reduces our carbon footprint on the planet, we can have a profound effect on the quality of the air we breathe and the quality of life we live in Southern California. Imagine what we can accomplish if we all just do one thing.